Welcome, welcome. Welcome to a, uh, another edition of the Bo Jackson Elite Commitment Spotlight. We're here uh, today with C.J. Dean of Centennial High School, 2021 uh, right-handed pitcher and outfielder, just recently committed to the University of Cincinnati and uh, excited to join him today. So, C.J., how you doing, man? Doing great. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well, man. And uh, Thanks for yeah, having me. Chatting a little bit before we uh, went on the air here, and, and uh, sounds like you got some good stuff coming here soon. But um, let's uh, let's dive into a little bit. Take us back, uh, you know, your upbringing and just kind of your history in baseball. Did you play multiple sports growing up, or you know, when was baseball the sport for you? Growing up, I played all the sports. When I was five, I played tennis, tried golf, I did baseball, football, basketball kind of everything. I was kind of that kid that just wanted to be outside. But starting more towards when I started, like, really getting into sports, I kind of stuck with baseball, football, and basketball. Kind of cut basketball off around freshman year. Just wanted to focus on baseball and football and leave that uh, – leave the winter just towards training and everything. But then baseball – I really started getting into baseball probably around sixth grade when I really started taking it serious. Football was just that, that, fun, that fun sport that, that just, like, no other – it was different. I like doing that all the time. And baseball, baseball is the same thing. It's awesome. So, you know, if I remember some conversations correctly, is this the first year you're not playing football in the fall? Yeah, I mean, I'm doing a little something. I'm, I'm the kicker right now. Oh, cool. Because I, I talked to a coach. I just I wanted to be part of the team. So last year, I'm going to put on a jersey, probably the last time ever. And I told him that, hey, is there a way that I can contribute to the team? We talked for a little bit, and we decided that I'm the kicker. I'll do PATs and kickoffs. I'll try to stay away from contact, but no promises. That's awesome, man. Yeah, very cool. Talk to us about your family. Um, you have a pretty athletic family. You know, if I remember, your sister played college basketball. Is that right? Or yeah, talk to us a little bit about you know your athletic background as a family. Yeah. So my dad played uh, baseball. He played at OU his first year. Then he went and uh, transferred to ODU. He played there for, for a few years, did really well there. My older sister, Aaliyah, she had plans to go play Division One softball, volleyball in college, but she tore her she tore her knee up in all different types of places her senior year and didn't get the opportunity. We talked to the family, and she kind of – that was just her last year of playing. But then Alyssa, Alyssa took off with basketball her sixth grade year. She, she was getting individual offers for eighth grade year for basketball, playing on the top teams in the country. She was nationally ranked. She committed to Memphis when she was 16. She went to the campus, loved it there, and committed. Then she tore her ACL her the summer going into her senior year. So she missed her basketball season her senior year, washed everything, went down to Memphis, played her freshman year, but into her freshman year, she tore her ACL for the second time. So she had missed another season, sat out, and then played. She kind of played – she kind of she, – she eased into it as much as she could, and then she transferred to Bowling Green. Then at Bowling Green, she tore ACL for the third time. And at that point, she was like, I – all the doctors were saying, we were saying, that's what might have to stop. So for probably a few months, she had said that she didn't – that she wasn't going to be able to play basketball anymore. But she, but she couldn't hold back from basketball too long. So she ended up talking to everyone, talking to her therapist, going through it, re, retraining and everything. And she transferred to Walsh. And now she's playing basketball there. And she, she loves it. Walsh, she, she said Walsh is her favorite school. She said it's like nothing else. Even though Division Two was not as high class as Memphis or BG is, she, she told me Division Two is where she likes it the best. That's very cool. Yeah. Talk a little bit. Do you think, uh, you know, her experience with recruiting and just going through everything in her sport, how much did that help you as you were navigating, uh, you know, recruiting for yourself with baseball? That that helped a lot. And I can't be thankful enough because growing up, when I would go on visits with her, I was in sixth grade, sixth grade, fifth grade, seventh grade, going on these visits with her, going to these big time division one schools. But also something that caught my attention was how, was how early she committed. And that's something she told me about is CJ, but don't, if someone gives you opportunity right away, hold back and wait. No, there's no, there's no rush to doing it. See, see what's right for you. And that's kind of where I am right now. So with her recruiting, going to these schools, seeing everything, got me where I was at, where I wanted, what I wanted to be in this school. That's very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Just, uh, 
some good maturity and wisdom there that, that she was able to pass on to you. So let's switch gears a little bit and, and uh, you know, talk to us a little bit about just how much that the Dome has helped your development. I mean, you have probably anyone in our organization, I think, has, has really been committed to coming here to train and tapping into all that it has to offer. Do you remember the first time you came to the Dome? And what was that like? Yes, the Dome is more than I could ever ask. With with being at Centennial, I love Centennial, but Centennial is not the most funded school when it comes to training facilities and everything. So at the Dome, when it's 15 minutes away, I get everything I need. I get the training, I get the machines, I get the cages, I get the workout places, I get everything I need. But the first time I was there was with Miles Martinez because Miles Martinez played for the Bo Jackson Lee team when I was a freshman. And that's how really I started getting in the dome was because I started showing up there, then people started seeing me. And then that's when I kind of got asked to come try out with Brandon for the 15 new black stock. But that first day when I went in there with Miles, I had my phone out, I was taking videos, pictures of everything. Because for me, that's I've never seen anything like it. I, if I went to a cage, I went to Menino's and I probably went there once a month. I was unable to drive at the time. I wasn't really able to like, get into that that cage that type of baseball lifestyle i i was already i always kind of talked about like i want to do this but i never had the place to so when i when i found out that the that the dome was being built that i had the chance to do it i kind of passed it up yeah that's that's incredible and talk to us a little bit just uh you know not just the the facility itself but you know the access to you know you, you've been training most of the summer with uh some some pro pitchers in minor league organizations and and I look over and you're, you're in, a, in a group with these dudes that are, you know, professional baseball players. And, and how much has that helped you, guys like Ryan Clark and Tommy Parsons and, you know, even talk a little bit about Brandon Zink and just his influence as well. But talk, talk about kind of how all these guys have helped your development. It's, it's amazing what they've done because I think there's a difference between coaching as a coach and coaching to really develop the player and really get their aspects and what they want to do in the future. And that's what I feel like Ryan, Tommy, Brandon, and even um, John LaCourt, they all, those are all people I text from time to time, just trying to keep them up to base. They text me outside of baseball, just check up on me, see how I've been. And that right there just shows me like who they really are and that. And I really admire that. Like, like Mr. LaCourt, when I was doing his throwing program, even during the summer or during the spring, I was still texting him. We and him were still keeping in contact with what I can do to further my pitching. And with, and with Ryan, I remember Ryan one day came up to me because he saw that I had that I stopped doing the course thing. And over the summer, he asked me if I wanted to come on Mondays and throw with them. And I said, I would love to. And over a certain time, we started doing it, we doing it more and more. And starting to be like a weekly basis where we're going on Monday, throw, going on Tuesday, do weighted balls, and then do lives on Thursdays and Fridays. And that type of competition, that type of level is just something I can't pass up. So cool. Yeah, it's an amazing story to see uh, you know, your development. And, and uh, you know, talk a little bit on the mound as a pitcher. I mean, obviously, you're a two-way player, a great athlete. But let's uh, key in a little bit on, on the mound and your development as a pitcher. How much velocity have you gained in the last – let's say 18 months 18 months so I was even keeping track so from freshman year all the way up to right now I've gained at least four miles per hour every year so I was going I probably sat 78 80 my freshman year my sophomore year I sat 84 85 then this year I'm sitting 87 89 and then hopefully next year, my senior year, before I go off to Cincinnati, I'll be sitting 92, 93. What do you think uh, has been, you know, some of the biggest pieces of uh, how you've climbed in velocity and just overall pitching development? Because, you know, I've seen you throw, and it's not just your velocity, but your breaking ball is, is sharp now. And, and uh, what do you attribute that to? I really is off-season training. That's when I get all my stuff in. I get all my rehab get my armor rest, I train my body so that when I do come to the summer, when I do come to the spring, which is 100% back, back to back to back. That way my arm is, I'm not throwing 100% every all year round. I get some time break. And then when I do come to off season, I really focus on explosive training, weight training, just keep my body healthy, eating right. So that when I do come to the point where my arm may hurt, I know, I know that my body can just relax for a little bit, rehab, do, do more stuff with it, and hopefully come back stronger. That's awesome. 
So I, I've asked a couple guys this, and I, I love throwing it out there. And I, I think I know what your answer would be, but um, do you feel like you enjoy training as an athlete about as much as you do competing? Yes, training training to me is competing because I always know that, that there is someone across the state from another city that's, that's competing for the same spot I am. I'm pretty sure that there's another kid out there that was, that was looking for the same position I was. And knowing that like, I got to wake up every morning to compete for that, that training is my competing no matter what. That's an incredible perspective, man. And I think if you uh, keep cultivating that as you, you know, continue to grow, it's going to be a fun uh, next chapter for you in, in college baseball. So let's switch gears a little bit. Uh, talk about your recruiting process and, you know, did it come on late for you? Did you get a lot of attention early? You know, we, we just mentioned your climb and velocity and, and tools and stuff, but uh, you know, talk to us a little bit about how that process went for you. Recruiting process is actually very slow. Since I didn't really start child baseball until – freshman year no one really ever heard of me so I came out of nowhere so my freshman year I kind of I didn't talk to a single school at all I really wasn't informed like on how the process went so I kind of sat down with with Pat coach Pat who coaches at OU right now we talked about how I can get my name out there how I need to do all this stuff so that next summer when I do go into sophomore year I can catch names of a few schools and from freshman year to sophomore year is when my school set really really jumped up, especially from pitching from aspect, pitching aspect and the hitting aspect. So my sophomore year, me and Pat, we got more into it. We, we started talking a little bit more schools, but at the end of the sophomore summer, I still wasn't talking to as many schools as I really planned on it. But so my junior year, I played with Bo Jackson Elite. And then that, when I started to really like shoot up because of the, the whole name Bo Jackson Elite, especially around Ohio, it's a very respected name. So I, I started talking to a lot more schools. I sent out probably over 100 emails from sophomore to junior year just saying, hey, I'm interested in your program. I really want to get to know you guys. Hopefully all this works out and you can get back to me. I probably heard back from 20% of the schools. So maybe 10, 20, 30 probably got back to me out of like 100 plus I sent out. So we, I, I stayed in contact with them. And then around junior year, they all said, all right, well, we're, really, we're, we're really interested. I want to come see you play. But then COVID hit. They, no one got to tell me my, my spring season because no, we, didn't have it, we didn't have a season. And then the summer hit. Ho I was really hoping that, that Division One and Division Two could come see me. It, the, the first day period was supposed to end July 1st. I was, I was, I'm, I'm like, okay, that's fine. It gives me enough time to warm up, and then I can go off J July. And they got pushed back to August 1st. And at that point, I'm like, okay, I'm playing with the Black Sox their last two uh, tournaments, and that's, in the, that's at the end of August. So hopefully someone can come see me then, and I can really jump off the there. And then it got pushed back again to August 30, 31st. And at that point, I'm like, you know what? I can't play football. That's where that whole aspect came in of me not being able to play because I was going to play fall ball. And then when I heard it got pushed back again until September 30th, I'm like, I don't know what to do at this point because I really want to get the recruiting process over with going into my senior year. I want to be of that, that, just that relief of knowing where I'm going and I can just kind of live out. But then when recruit, when, then when Cincinnati had reached out, I was at that point, I was offered from ODU and that entire day when I committed, that was, that was a spiral because a lot of things are going on. My mind was everywhere, but then I finally settled down. If I come with my, with my decision. That's awesome. Yeah, let's talk a little bit, you know, about you were in Cincinnati and you know, who was the first coach you, you spoke with uh, about the program and, and your role there maybe? At Cincinnati? Mm hmm It was Coach J.D. He had called me that day. He said that he was really interested in me, that he had talked to Corey and everything. And then that day he had offered me over the phone as a pitcher outfielder. He said that he would give me the chance as an outfielder and all this, and as a pitcher, come in. He said that he would. It doesn't matter who you are, what grade you are. He said that if you're good enough and you're one of the best nine, you will play, and I will find you. I will find you a spot. So I'm just hoping that I can prove my. Because I've never been the one to be scared of competing. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to give it my hundred percent. You could be a fifth year senior. You could be a freshman. You could be a sophomore, a junior. I'm going to go in there as a mindset of, I'm. I want to start. I want to be the best I can be. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, let's let's dive into that a little bit. What what else you know really excites you about the University of Cincinnati? I mean, Coach Guggins is uh, a proven leader down there. Uh, 
Coach Heilman is a, a phenomenal uh, recruiter and pitching coach, and and uh, you know, that program is really on the rise. You know, what what all are you mm -hmm. excited about there? It's just the campus. I the campus. I love the the uh, the sports medicine program. I love it. The fact that they're that they're a winning program. That when they go in there, that they play their facility. How everything's kind of close. The campus isn't too big, but it's not small. I because my big thing was what people always told me is that if I go somewhere, if baseball was, God forbid, were to end, catching myself going there and just being a student. And I remember my sister, when she played at Memphis, uh, Memphis and Cincinnati are in the same uh, conference. So when I would go to Cincinnati to watch Bosa play, I would go to the campus. And the uh, and basketball arena is literally right next to the baseball field. So I would occasionally walk over there. I, I went on the field one time just to just look at it. And my freshman year and sophomore year, I remember saying, like, I would love to be here. And then when that jumped into reality, I just took it. Yeah, that's incredible. What year was that? Um, if you remember, you know, how old were you when you were trespassing on the Cincinnati uh, baseball field there? <laughs> Probably eighth grade, freshman year, because she played there two years. Yeah. And she would go down and, and – uh, Go play since they'd always go play at Cincinnati that that time of year. So I would go there and I would either look from a distance or occasional or one, at least one time I did just kind of go stand up close. I just wanted to see it firsthand, and it was it was just a great feeling. Just trying to see myself out there on the field, being part of the team, be part of the family. It was just amazing. Yeah, that's in, that's incredible, man. And uh, you know, it's it's cool to see that kind of dream and vision uh, that you had. You know, as you're roaming the outfield and, and looking forward to it, it, it's about to happen. You'll be heading there to, to you know, throw in that bullpen and, you know, maybe roam that outfield. And, and uh, it's really cool to see that dream kind of come to fruition uh, because of your hard work and, and dedication to the process. And uh, we're very, very excited for you, for sure. So last question, you know, if you could go back and you did such a great job of just kind of articulating your journey and, and how it all got to here, but, you know, what is one thing, maybe even two things, if they exist, uh, that you would try to do differently if you could do the process over again? Don't get caught up on other people. That was my main thing, especially growing up with, with athletes like my sister or seeing people at the Dome. I, my big thing is something that my dad always told me was I can't compare myself to others. And that's one thing that I always had trouble with was I was saying, well, I feel like I'm better than them. Why aren't I going to that place? But at the same time, I just had to focus on myself. I had to, I had to grind. I had to not worry about what other people had to say. Because there's going to be people out there who are going to try to hold you back. And there's going to be out there people who, who want to help you. But at the same time, one thing that I was had trouble with was I was always comparing myself to people. But that's what's something I would just say is focus on yourself. Have a ton of vision to the dream. Live it, live it out. Grind. Keep, keep going. Do, do, all, do everything you can do. And you'll find yourself where you want to be. That's incredible, man. That, that's just outstanding advice. And, uh, yeah, congratulations again. We're, we're so excited for you at the Dome. And, and uh, you know, our hope is this can just be a springboard and, and uh, you know, your best stuff's in front of you in terms of uh, experience and, and work. So keep, uh, keep on the grind, and we'll see you at the Dome soon.